Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, thank you. Hello, 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 and good evening, morning, day, or night, wherever it is you are, to all the wonderful people of the internet. My name is J-Man, this is Miners Love Games, and let me be the first to say welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. Where we last left off, we finished off with um, some explorations of the... Auntie Apple's swamps, got into some fighting, and then finally began our delving into the um, depths of the Underdark. And the Underdark immediately made a uh, made an impression on us with us encountering in no short order a minotaur getting absolutely bodied the ruined remains of an outpost still standing strong the dead remains of numerous selenite um worshippers an ancient drow sword that answered our calls for blood and we now have and the fight with a spectator, a lesser version of a beholder, all within 10 minutes of you climbing down that ladder. Now, if that is not a sure sign that we are in for a journey, I don't know what is. I want to apologize as well if we are starting 30 minutes uh, later than usual, uh, about eight, uh, 9 o'clock instead of 8.30, and I want to apologize for that. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, we got I got caught up in some stuff that required my attention, um, but we're back. We're good. We're ready to roll. I also told you all in my Monday Night Lies of P stream that, uh, uh, that we would, uh, uh, that I would let you all, if there was any changes to the schedule, um, there isn't, not for the most part, um, the Outlast Trials is looking to be um, releasing a new um, chapter in their uh, Outlast Trials game um, tomorrow. So I might forego another chapter of Signalis just so that I can play that, see if I can grab a couple friends or anyone like that to uh, play around with it with me. We'll see. I still got a couple more days to decide on that. Otherwise, I'll just play Signalis. Um, in addition, with Alan Wake 2 being on the horizon, I also looked into that game. And I wish I had known this earlier. 
Uh, Alan Wake 2 is not going to be happening for quite a bit as the dreaded Epic Games Store exclusive has struck that game hard and is only available on PS5, uh, Xbox Series S, and the Epic Games Store for PC. I'm not touching the Epic Games Store. I never once have. And if I ever get a PS5, one of the first things I'm going to do with that game thing is probably play Demon's Souls. So we're probably just going to wait until... Um... Probably just going to wait until... Da -da 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 -da, words are hard. Uh, we're probably just going to wait until... It makes the transfer over to Steam, which is perfectly fine and good with me because that'll give time for the inevitable optimization patches, bug patches, probable DLC, and all that stuff that comes with modern day AAA games. Which I'm not complaining about, as I particularly uh, enjoy uh, all of the games made by Remedy. But, waiting for it to go from Epic to Steam also gives me the opportunity to get through Control and play the Alan Wake DLC for that, which I have been told and heard um, plays a key point in Alan Wake 2. So, playing that to get some context for Alan Wake 2 is probably great, but um, in the meantime, that just gives us more time to focus be Baldur's Gate 3, and a myriad of other games. I hope you're all not getting bored. I'm not getting bored with any of these games. And with that little, um, with that little tangent out of the way, let's go ahead and dive on in. Jump right to it. Boing! Um, so yeah. Let's boot this up, and where we last left off was the Underdark. Gonna keep doing that. But I hope you're all doing well on this fine Wednesday evening. Me starting, like, later might not give me the time to get as far as I'd like, but we'll we'll just play it by ear. But um I hope you're all doing well. I hope um this week has been treating you right. We are almost through it and boy am I glad. Because every Monday I wake up and I immediately think, is it Friday yet? But yeah, I hope you're all doing well. As always, for me, I'm always working on more stuff behind the scenes. I need to get in talks with someone for that... I commissioned for that VTuber rig. I need to get a heart rate monitor set up with Pulsoid. And just all sorts of stuff. But, where we last left off, we finished the Spectator. And... Were faint in typical Dark Elf fashion, referring them, even though their main leader ate, ate shit. Step carefully. There's a trap. Fire Amber. What path lies before me? Again, we are 15 streams into this game, and we are still. We still have not ended Act 1. We have just entered into the Younger Dark. This game is massive. I'm going to be playing this game forever. But after a rather painful... Um, encounter... I am very privy on venturing further in and seeing where this leads. We also have another path uh, back 
this way, camera cooperate, that we can also look at. I've walked into those clouds of spores and I fear I might be turning into a mushroom at some point in the future. But, but never mind. it is what it is. Oh god. Damn it. Anyway, um... Yeah, disable that shit. What the fuck do you mean it's a level 30? We've got another... We've got another, um... Huh. Got another, like, castle gate over that way. Got some weird-looking... wharf dot thingies over there. And we got other thingies that might be of interest over here. I have such a way with words. Can you- would you believe me if I told you I was reading on a college level by the time I was in middle school? Cause I sure can't. Not a thing still in this brain that I are the good at. No sir. Still alive, so that's progress. Be wary. This place is trapped. Oh, you gotta be fucking me. Take a number. Well, hell, I'm glad I left when I did. Oh, that helped. Still breathing, despite everything. Spectators, I spectators are hideous aberrations that float above the ground, fiercely staring around and shooting beams at anything they don't appreciate. Well, they only work together for a short time, it is hard to overstate the influence. Examine. Your next lightning spell, Entry. Who has lightning spells? Oh, way to go still. No one really has lightning spells. I really need to go just one day sort through all my shit. That's a Carlac. That's from Ethel. Most of these are from Ethel. Hang on to those. 
Alright, let's... Before we go any further... Before we go any further, I feel like we should probably take an opportunity... Where the hell did this come from? Before we go further, we should probably just have a quick look over everything we have and decide on... Yeah, send that to... Send to camp. Send to camp. And crossbow. Can we dual wheel? Ooh! Can we dual wield it with another light weapon? Sterian. I'll give that the Shadow Heart. I'll give that to those to Shadow Heart. The arrows are mine. That is mine. That is mine. I'll give that to Asterion. I'll give those to Shadowheart. I will keep that. Antidote. Basic poison. Ouch. Right. Arrow of Lightning, Arrow of Roaring Thunder, I'll hold on to those. Roll of Revivify, Aerodot Ring, Silk Necklace, the Blast Pendant. I will give that to Shadowheart. The Spectator's Eyes. I will give that to Shadowheart. Poisonous Slime Bomb, I will give that to Harlac. I will hang on to these. Split bows. Give some to Shadowheart. Give that to Karlac. And I'll just hold on to the rest. Don't know why I have that. Don't know why I have those. Eight. Stop blowing up, you bastard. Scroll of Shocking Grass. Um. Actually, I'll give that to Karlak. Scroll of Ray of Sickness. Scroll of Protection of Evil. Melf's Acid Arrow. Scroll of Protection Weapon. Alright, that, that's a good even spread. have a look at everything you've got. Saloon's Dream. And Friendship. And Flingin'. Valor Alu. Uh, Sparkle Hands. Reasons Grass. Uh, I like the Amulet of Lost Voices. I like the Spurn Band. I think... The Spectator's Eyes is really good, though. When was the last time we used... Yeah, when was the last time we used Dancing Lights? Our Twink Vampire friend could always use a few more. Hmm. Actually, I'll have him keep that. Oh. Level 3 Necromancy spell.
Uh, I don't know. That, that's good for now. good when it comes to uh when did I get this when did I get when did he get that why can't I remember anything why am I so bad at this 12 studded lever armor 12 Character sheet, 16, plus free to dexterity, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, I like that. You gain two lightning charges. An aware takes damage while having lightning charges. Then there was that other thing. Hmm. Uh, da -da 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 -da. that one to Asterion. And that to Carlac. I'll take the gold. We'll all climb down Hunky Dory. This path might actually be the better option considering well Don't mind if I do. the Minotaur. Oh god it's saved. Considering the Minotaur in the other direction. a good meal. Ah. Uh. Hello. Someone there. Come on, let's go.
Oh, thank God, it's stupid. Oh, oh God, no, it's not, it's not a beast. I do not like the Underdark. Oh, it's a monstrosity.
put him up. Well, well. Look what we have here. Hasn't done anything, but that's fine by me. Man, if this is just uh, the beginning areas of the Underdark, we are screwed. Guzzler garb, bucket, a bone. Oh, someone had a bad day. Blood Guzzler garb. When enemy damages the wearer, the wearer gains wrath for one turn. That's tailor made for you, Garlock. Nice. Oh, that looks great on her. And it's only clothing, too, so she can still benefit from the Bracers of Defense. This place sucks. Like, I know I just got here and everything. But this place sucks. Trust me. That's good. On educating the faithful, an excerpt from a lengthy speech by Grand Matron Tere, first delivered in Menzo Baranzen and recorded by a Seldarine spy. Raise be to Loth, mother of all drow. Her web binds us, body and soul, and strangles the unworthy before they can draw breath. Those who stand before me have proven their worth. You shall educate all new converts to Loth's laws using any means necessary. Many of them fear the goddess as they should, but their faith is not yet true. Their minds are simple and should be treated accordingly. They must follow the order of every priestess like a sacred decree. They must never cover their eyes and insult Lull's gift. They must honor the house that raised them from their pathetic, treasonous origins. They may keep our se they must keep our secrets upon pain of death. Ensure that death is public should the time ever come. Lolf smiles on those who are creative in matters of torture. Lovely. Lovely right. person, Lolf. What now? Open up. Keep 
Keep your distance, darling. A crooked touch. Where the fuck was this roll when I was trying to disarm the... Disarm that trap. Bunch of empty boxes and spider webs. Guess Lolth's cultists don't be back here in a while. Drow studded leper armor. Tracings of glossy black. creature back to its organic form. Gold. Drow studded leather armor. Tracings of glossy black spider web mark this drow made armor. It is supple but strong, and made to blend in with the dark caves and crevices of the Underdark. I'll take it, but it seems like something that... Seems like something, what we got from Infara is already the superior option. Uh, what does this note say? Dark Mother, Weaver of Destiny, offer us a blessing to slay your foes. May they be strangled by the threads of fate and die in red in your image. Lolf be praised. Wish to live in more interesting times. Lillen knew knew who his dark elf brethren were. These guys have seen everything. He never really interacted with them before. He'd heard stories, he'd seen one or two before, yes, but he always, being a wood, wood elf, especially a half, a wood elf, a half elf, a wood half elf, he always preferred the up above, the wider world compared to the restrictive confines of the Underdark. He's been here, he's been here once or twice. A lifespan such as his. A lifespan such as his. You see, you can see just about anything. But. He doesn't, he isn't too familiar with the darker, deeper aspects of the Underdark. Dumb as it may be, I would like to use... I would like to use it on one of these guys and see what they have to say. If something's on my mind. Dawn. The drow is silent. Dawn. Who is that? The wizard. Our employer. Oh. You seem distressed. Will you be alright? Yes. Alright. Well, that was nothing. Still. I would have used it if I had the chance. There's still one guy left. And Dorn is, uh... Well, he ain't coming around anytime soon, at least. Holy shit, Karlak. Alright. 
say we can... It looks like we can go a bit further and explore this way. And carry us back up this way as well, if we so desire. Boy, this place is massive. And boy, this place is scary. Even with dark vision, it would probably pray. Oh, this place sucked. It would probably be helpful to have a light on matters. May the gods take you first. That's the immediate problem handled. No. Alright, let's go this way. Honestly, if I had known all this stuff that was waiting for us over here, I might have just taken my chances with the Minotaur. This drow's body was crushed. Must have fallen from pretty high up. One favor, one faithful servant. That is all I summon. No more and no less than Malice de Word and ever had. Or indeed, the mother of lusts herself. De Worden. Dritz de Worden. He's a... Uh, dark elf character from a series of really popular and well-known Dungeons and Dragons novels. The Yakolo was quite a sight in all its forms. I'd read of its foul over, but odor, but I found it intoxicating, like rose water. So it smashed a few artifacts, hissed at a master. Archmage should have revered me for such a conjure. Instead, he threatened to curse me, to make me a drider. Yet, my time will come. Soon I will return to Minzo Baranzen and Sorcerer. Then the Archmage will worship me. I will be Sir. And then he slipped and fell and died like a witch. Poor, 
Damn you. What's your story? The corpse regards you lifelessly. Who are you? House Vandry. Farscout. Searching. What were you searching for? Quick path to surface. What happened to you? Through backpack to light. Fell. How did throwing a backpack make you fall? Mushrooms. Disappear. Guessed wrong. Do you have any allies here? Works alone. Better that way. The and now you died alone. You can ask no okay, that's actually questions. really helpful. He mentioned... He mentioned that, um... The... Um... Mushrooms are not what they seem. So better take a closer look. Uh. Yeah, these. Some of these are not what they see. Okay. What the hell is that? Breathe deep and move. Mushroom circle. Does this lead to the Feywild? Watch your back. Come on. Asterion, you got... You can jump. Come on. I know the joke is that white boys can't jump, but I mean, pale elves should be able to jump. Maybe you can't.
Come on, you son of a bitch, you can jump. Fuck. Mushrooms are out to get you. <laughs> yep. Go. I never would have thought to try and use the mushrooms until if I hadn't talked to this guy. I gotta use that. You're a freaking rogue, dude. You should be able to jump like there's no tomorrow. These things have stayed interesting. Another step forward. God damn it, what am I missing? Some... Ah, <sighs> oh, what now? Oh, it warped us all the way back over here. I guess that's one way of fast travel. If you use it again, what happens? Oh, it's a fast travel deep point. Takes us... I bet there was something up here, but I'm that I missed it. Y'all fucked our, uh, y'all fucked our, uh, investigation checks. Oh well, that's the name of the game. Oh shit. Oh, that's really cool. I like this. I like this too.
us in action. Us in action. But. That's really good. really fuck with this though. I also really like that. 6 to 15, 6 to 8. It has extra reach. This is versatile. I think I'll try it out at the very least. Never a dull moment. <sighs> One day I'll catch a break. Yep. That day is not today, mi amigo. Looks like we might be able to jump down that way, but... What does this way hold? Probably nothing good. Scorched ground. Better watch out. Ah, oh, what the fuck is that? Cover, bitch. Let's move. Let's get this over with. This might be a problem. Oh, look at all those goodies, though. I can totally hide and cover like the bravest coward, though. Okay. Well, well, well. I'm ready. On I go.
his head shut. Making me sweat. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Careful, I bind. My faith will guide me. Okay, we're in combat now. Soldier. I'm gonna enjoy this. Well, but ends yeah, not as bad as I could have. I wonder. Blood follows us everywhere. What's up for discussion? It said arcane, so a part of me was wondering if maybe this thing was like arcane, if arcane interference would affect it do? in some way. But unfortunately, that does not appear to be the case. now. Keep it quick. No one stopped me yet. Looks like Asterion is the What's only that? one who can actually do anything to this. No harm in a little conversation. I'll take this way. King. Let's ride. Hmm. This is very odd.
Yeah, there it is. Go for a good meal. Whatever it takes. Shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. On my way. Trust no one. Have a lot on my mind and <coughs> in it. Careful, I might. What the hell? Always sharp. Time to 
press ahead. Oh, she, oh, she's so cute. Good enough. Is that blood? No, never mind. All right. At the ready. Now this is what I'm talking about. This is worth it. Letter to year. Year. Dearest year. I don't know if you're coming back, if you'll even read this message, but if you do come back, can you wait for me? I'll only be gone a few ten days, but the thought of coming back to this empty tower, with nothing but Bernard to fill these halls, I don't know how much longer I can take this. I miss you. I miss you... so much. I can't shake the thought of how different things might have been if only I'd been less stubborn. Working on your lightning inventions, my magic, eating together, laughing at your stupid puns, waking up next to you. But despite everything, I still love you. So please, if you read this, can you wait? I'll be back. I won't be long. Wherever yours, Lenore. A few sentences are pinned below in a different hand. I waited. I waited until Tarsa. I'll always wait for you. But you didn't come. Lost Lenore, literally. What a tragedy. Asterion, work your magic, buddy. Should be easy. Nice. Skybreaker. And they shall have Celestia's light. Even if we must crack wide the heavens to bring it. Harlock might get some use out of that. No time to rest. I always get thrown for a loop whenever I see Celestia mentioned here. Because I always have to remind myself that no. Dungeons and Dragons in the 80s did it first. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, came afterwards. We're not referring to Princess Celestia. Swift as my feet can carry me. Which is funny, because I got into Dungeon Dungeons and Dragons. That's a funny story. I got into Dungeons and Dragons because I watched Curious. an MLP episode that was based or that had Spike 
uh, Discord, Big Mac, I think Sunburst. Um, playing their, the MLP Worlds version of um, Dungeons and Dragons called uh, Ogres and Oubliettes. And uh, after I watched the episode, I messaged uh, Jim Miller, Big Jim Miller and MK Tune on Twitter. That, that uh, Jip, Big Jim and MK Tune are there. Um, Twitter like handles, that. I believe. They're both of them are show writers, right? But like one of them is the in charge of the show proper, and the other is like a uh, producer and a writer. I I messaged both of them and asked them, "Hey, you two, after today's episode, I'm thinking of getting into dungeon, going out and getting Dungeons and Dragons. Would you guys recommend it?" And they both responded, and I quote, Yes, three exclamation points from Jim Miller. And MK Tune, it's so much fun. <laughs> and that day, I went to my local game store and I bought um, the Dungeons Master, Dungeon Master Guide. No way to ignite these. Strange. Dungeon Master's Guide. Uh. Dungeon Master's Guide, Player's Handbook, and, um, oh god, there's more of them, and the Monster Manual, and I haven't looked back since. Where did I get Harold from? Well, well, well. I can't remember. Let's see what I can glean. I must keep going. Do not miss. Okay, that one's down. Well, hello. Over here. Everything, despite everything.
shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. What do you wish for? God damn it. Let's get on with it. I must keep going. Come on. <sighs> All's well that ends. Yeah, not as bad as it ever. Drop down to lower levels if we so desire. We are I off the beaten path. So I only came here because this place seems important. Just trying to figure out where the hell I'm supposed to go. Strangely empty. Oh, I cursed to put my hands on everything. The beginning of this book proudly declares it to be a play by Dame Inia. Inia, followed by an extensive introduction and 23 pages of notes on the text. Though the book itself seems barely touched, one stanza is encircled twice. There is a light in every living thing, crawling towards the surface to survive, and in its wake it tramples everything. It will kill the rest so that the one can thrive. Seems like the owner was quite the literary type. Oh shit. What's hiding here? Broken machinery. The cogs of the smell contraption are bent out of shape. The steel sheeting dented and cracked. Still, you can make out two sets of initials in Boston to the cop. LDH and YTS. Hmm. Interesting. from the no, chest you so what might you be hiding oh that didn't sound good oh, that didn't sound good Go take one of the things out of the chest. Chest of the mundane. It's transformed. What is this trickery? What? 
Mistress Grace, Feverfall. Wearing these boots is like walking on cotton clouds. That might be useful. Golden Gut. Hearth Light Bomb. Now and again, a small ball of light flickers in the dark liquid. Like the reflection of some alien yet sweet star on the darkest ocean. Golden Gut. Roll of protection for good and evil. Oh! Looking at his chest fills you with a suspiciously overwhelming feeling that there is absolutely nothing special about it. Interesting. Step quick. I definitely think I'll get a little more mileage out of this for you. What a charmer. <sighs> Soldier. Making me sweat. Yeah. You'll get a little more mileage out of that. The spider no, web boots were very circumstantial. That. Best be on my way. Ascend. Beast. Oh, it's an elevator. Descend. Nothing's happening. But it doesn't look broken. Shadow Heart, what Whatever can you tell me? Not a budge. Better take a look around. Harlack? Run by magic. Wonder if I can get it active again. Why is it broken? You're powered by magic. For goodness sake. Powered by magic. Can't slow down. Hmm. Well, if it's powered by magic, there's got to be... No way to ignite these. Strange. Got to be some kind of battery or something. Main tower. Reach the adamantine forge. We still have much to explore around here. there be any more of those things. Arlac. Attention. Place this interesting. More for me. I'm a madness. Sounds lovely. 
Got a little light on here. Let's have a look. Watch your back. Who would look, who would pull no, that off better? Bad. This Fredbear look, a uh, book, looks like it once contained a play, but most of it has been lost to time, vermin, and an unfortunate inkspan. Only two full sentences are distinguishable. How can I trust? Will I ever know? How can I show myself, my darkest me? There's gotta be some way to power this stuff up. Looks like there might be a way down over here. Oh, Jesus. Well. Well, hello. Darian, you do have a feather fall. Who has fever for? Now it's good to be alive. My faith will guide me. Still alive, so that's progress. All right. That's curious. Wits and blades always sharp. Never a 
dull moment. I'm way too big. Man, this all these little secret things make me want to play a uh, druid. Don't no bring holes in along. Can't really figure why I should. I got my dream team set up right here. What's in now, here? what do we need? <gasps> oh, sir! You are exactly what we were looking for. This bright blue... This bright blue flower, picked from a budding susser tree, exudes a honey-sweet aroma, which turns foul and eventually fades away if the bloom is exposed to sun. Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Let me, let, let me try something here.
I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Hold on. I went and looked up if, um... I went and looked up what the use for these things might be, and I'm an idiot. Bingo. Hole. Below is a transcript of an interview with the writer and director of A Pleasurable Deal, Mr. Kingsley Hart. Interviewer. What was the inspiration behind this, if I may be so bold, entirely lewd piece of drama? Art. It's about exploring the taboo, seeing who we as people really are. Yes, Robert makes a deal with a cambion, but who wouldn't? Interview. Well, I like to think most people wouldn't. Art. I mean, you don't know most people. Everyone wants something. Everyone needs something. Cambians can see it. In a way, they know us better than we know ourselves. Interview interviewer. But at the end of the play, Robert dies horribly. What does that say about what we, as you put it, need? Harp. Harp. You forget. Robert dies because he broke away from Carlisle. He didn't stay true to the deal they made. Interviewer. So... You're encouraging people to make a pact with Hells's offspring. To give up, as Robert did, his soul. Part. We only have one life. Why not make the most of it? Interviewer. So... What was your deal? I beg your pardon? Interviewer. In fact, this was your directorial debut, wasn't it? You couldn't even get published in the tabloid Baldur's Bash before this play came out. Did you honestly trade your soul for an erotic play? Harp. I... Alright, we're done here. Any... Anything for, uh... That notoriety, I Never suppose. Easy path. Retice on the anti-magic properties of Susser trees. Oh, 
Only the first paragraph is finished. The Anti-Magic Properties of Susser Tree Flowers by Dr. L. D. Herps. For those knowing about Susser trees, their magical properties have always been a topic of debate. Not only their ability to create an anti-magic aura, which is complete enough that even those unattuned to the weave can feel its effect, but also, and most interestingly, interestingly, and most interestingly to those living in the world above, the way its roots, bark, and flowers can be harnessed to make magic items. Rumors of such items are rare, but spread in settlements bordering the underdog. Their existence, however, has never been confirmed by any of our clerics, nor by any other reputable scholars. I hypothesize that these items are no mere legends, and indeed, in this treatise, I will endeavor to explain how I myself created items that have anti-magic properties, and that use the magical absorption of susser tree flowers as a power source. Lines have been drawn on the following pages as if the author intended to fill them with writing, but the remainder of the thin book is blank. Hmm. I'll take that. Ah! That's me. Each chapter of this book details a unique case study in the soothsayer Geraldine Haverlow's illustrious career. Its twenty-third chapter is conspicuously dog-eared. Chapter 23, The Frightened Noble and the Ochre Omen. Here under, I have transcribed a conversation between myself and a young nobleman of my lifelong acquaintance. Typically, he came to me for guidance in matters of love and fortune. But his visit to me on one particular occasion stands out particularly in my mind. Himself. Madam, please, what I say to you is true. Myself. Perhaps you'd be so kind as to repeat it, for the record. The fellow I met was ochre of skin, with ears like an elf, and the nose of a half-rotted corpse. Mockings like those on a fawn's hide decorated his skin. I see. And what did he say as he approached you in the... What was it? Misted glen upon your lands. The fellow. The creature. The man came to me slowly. A blade in his right hand. I was transfixed as though stricken stiff by some magic. He held the sword below my chin and asked me something I could not understand. I can see it now, the blade, silver as the moon. As a... Uh, the moon in a lake beneath my chin. Calm yourself, sir. You are quite safe. You say you cannot understand what the fellow said. At first, no. No, at first I knew not what tongue he spoke, 
but he seemed to glean my confusion. He tried in common instead, and he said, Tell me now, which plane is this? He was vain, I lost track of the goat, grasp of a ghost, and fainted directly to the ground. And then, and then, when I woke, I know not how much later, he was gone, and I flew to you. I understand, child. Be not frightened, for you have been visited by a most auspicious omen. Your crops will yield twice their wealth this year. Truly. But who was he? He was a figment of your inner demon, a messenger from your deepest intuition. And he came to inform you of your impending lot. And I tell you, it was so. I doubt that. I doubt that very much. Catching myself smiling more lately. I think that's your fault. Nothing new. Arlac? Hey, soldier. Nope, nothing. Alright. Darian? Yes. Something that's been bugging me lately. I thought of vampires couldn't walk in their homes without an invitation. I can't. And yet I cross the threshold like moonlight through leaves. This worm is a powerful little beast, isn't it? Yeah. That's what worries me. Oh, don't be so glum. Look at the power it's bringing us. I can walk in sunlight, trespass upon any home, manipulate minds. There isn't another vampire in the realms like me. Granted, the looming doom is an issue, but why not enjoy the benefits while we can? How does someone become a vampire exactly? It's simple. Just find a vampire that will drink your blood and turn you into a vampire spawn. Their obedient puppet. In theory, the next step is to drink their blood. Once you've done that, you're free. And a true vampire. In theory? People think the biggest threat to a vampire is a cleric with a stake. It's not. The biggest threat to a vampire is another vampire. They're scheming, paranoid, power-hungry beasts. Oh, so, pol so why would any vampire give up control over a spawn to create a competitor? Trust me, it doesn't happen. Talk more later. Anti magic, meet magic. This is going to make traversing around a hell of a lot easier.
I looked up Sus Retrieve Blues just to make sure I wasn't wrecking myself out of uh, something super important, and it turns out I was. If I, if I had destroyed those things, I would not have been able to power up any of this, and we would have been fucked. Show myself my darkest me. As a power source. There we go. That's like your only hint. I gotta say, this place would make a great, like, I look around at this place and, I'm, and all I can think to myself is someone could totally recreate this in Skyrim as like your own personal house. Like those awesome ones you see in the videos all the time. this tower go. Good fucking lord. Carefully, yeah, give that to Shadow Heart for now and then potentially give that to. Who would I give that to? Would I give that to Will or should I give that to. Gale? Strange place for a button, especially one that doesn't work. Oh, it probably worked. It probably just activated some killer robot. Or 
killer construct or something that's gonna make my day a hell of a lot worse. This feared creature was clearly flayed alive. The skin clumsily stitched together and mounted. Lovely! Papers, the careful art of pursue ciphers. The writing on this torn out strip of paper is shaking and blotted with tears, making it barely legible. The silence stretches on. I'm all alone. Please, can I hold your hands for just a while? And it, oh, what the hell? An engraved disc of Gif Yankee origin containing a complex cipher that can decrypt ancient Gif dialects. A useful discovery if one should encounter such archaic writings. That'll probably come in handy. Give a gray. From Bar Barakua we made our stand, meant to rule but led astray. By wicked tentacle and wicked hand, this world belongs to the Grey. Orindal stole all we had, yet taught the weapons by which to slay. Forge your minds to iron clan, this world belongs to the Grey. The exile freed us with his command, conquer what was taken away. Crush every monument into finest sand. This world belongs to the Grey. Trade your heart for steel and tent, for with whip and mind we flay. Let them all heal here of our descent. The world is nothing but Grey. Sounds like something. Sounds like a Gif Yank poem. Are people here Gifyankis? Gifyanki? Histories of Thera, Gif and Mind Flayers. This book comprises several chapters, one for each cited source. It claims to contain first hand transcriptions of the oral histories of several storytellers throughout the realm. Chapter 4 Alador, the Swift, 700 years of age, Wood Elf Storyteller, hailing from the Wood of Shark Teeth. I don't know if I've read this one. Sounds familiar. It took me several ten days of quiet habitation in the wood before the venerable Palador felt comfortable revealing his presence to me. The longer I stayed, demonstrating I was no threat to his health and peace, the more open he was to gentle inquiry. His tale, relayed to me on a chilly morning as we stoked a small fire between us, was like none I had heard before or since. I asked if it were fiction and he insisted emphatically it was as true as his own right eye. I think I read this one already, but whatever. Long ago, before my eyes and ears, before your lonesome quill, dear scribe, there was an empire of people, or perhaps only belief. An empire of brain eaters, soul wasters. They called themselves elephants, the flayers of minds. 
The children of Gif were bowed, bent in service to the flayers, a passionate people made to serve a cold belief. The flayers were untouchable, their minds a great oppressor. No proud will, no proud will or passion would break Gif's children free. Until at last a reckoning, its source unknown, its power unproven, but its events, history making. The cowed would not be cracked. Gif's children fought back valiantly, their freedom theirs, the flares bent, and broke it till today. The disc is formed from slate and engraved with Githyanki writing. You examine them closely, but can't make much sense of them. Using the cipher you found, you might be able to reveal the disc's meaning. We'll stash the disc for now. I'm gonna give this to uh, Lazel. You should take the disc to Lazel. She might know more about it. Yeah. These Githyanki markings. Lizelle might know. A Map's Memoirs. The reflections of Paul A Map, a halfling humanist whose writings advise fair and peaceful ends to vicious conflict. My life. My life has been a long succession of pleasures. To see my town take to my ideas and seize legal discrimination of local orcs. To see my fights against horrid living conditions in city factories take off. To have the chance to see a new generation take to these ideas of a better, kinder, fairer, intelligent world and run with it to new reaches of the continent. It was not a life without struggle, however. And I shall regret its failures. My old friend Sulto comes to mind, who adopted such cruel ideologies later in life. I will forever console myself in the idea that such a brilliant mind could only conceive such theories under the strain of exile, and the promise of a reinstatement, as she ultimately was. I don't know what that accent was, I am so sorry. to darkness, an epic tragedy about power, corruption, and loneliness. Prologue, A Lonely Road, Thunder and Lightning, Enter Sorif. Sorif. New sounds through damp and dark oppression break. Is it the foe, that foul contemptuous heel, or art thou friend? A rescue from my lonely wake. A mouth of love for me, not love for blood and steel. Enter Rysia. Rysia. How would I know? How would I know, Sorith? It's been so long, what do I know of you and you of me? Wait. Do you hear that sound? Enter Amphius. Amphius. What's this? Those figures so familiar both, but still you seem so strange. It's Amphius. Dear Amphius, what happened to your face? It's pale as death. Your eyes are black as shark. And you? I saw your teeth. 
they're sharp as blades. And what is with this road so slick with blood? What happened here? What happened to us all? Exeunt. End the prologue. Act 1, 10 years prior. The rest of the play tells the tale of three elven friends, their paths to power, and how, corrupted, mad, and lonely, they killed each other. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Dearest Lenon, I'm not sure I should say this, but your last letter really worried me. Why in all hells would you tame a bullet? Just because you found it near Myrna's grave doesn't mean that that's a sign. I'm really worried about you, Lenore. A bullet is not a pet. Using it as a guardian is one thing, but you sound quite taken by it. I know you don't want to come back before you finish your research, but if you are feeling lonely, you know my door is always open. Lots of love and hugs, Emerith. Yes, it really warms my heart to hear that you put the autumn crocus flowers on Myrna's grave. I remember she liked to roll around in them, even though she'd always sneeze after. She was such a soft, loyal dog. I wish there was more I could do. Seems like the loneliness was the worst enemy here. The spell play. This book is comprised of several chapters one for each cited source. It claims to contain first-hand transcriptions of the oral histories of several storytellers throughout the realm. Chapter 25. Cornelius and Tomili of Swarby Ward, halflings encountered on the Golden Road south of Innerlich. I met the brothers, or rather they found me, in the lower pass through the Fireshear Mountains. They had encountered a trail of golden discs along the path, and had resolved to gather and return them to whatever fool had more coin than common sense. It was to our mutual embarrassment, then, that I removed my cloak to reveal my patchwork yellow hide. It was molting season, I explained, and a traveler on the road had not the luxury to shed their scales in private, as would be proper. I suspect they knew too little of Dragonborn to be appropriately disgusted, and instead invited me to sup with them. Over a roadside fire, I learned of the purpose behind their journey. Lurian, my lad, our ancestral home. It was lost during the spell play. Well, nothing lost, gone. It's not Nan's lucky masters, is it? It sank. Wasn't I there when the blue fire took it? Sure, what do you remember? You were knee-high to a gnome. I remember you crying. Maybe it was you that sank the place. Going back to finish the job? Watch that lick, lest I fad in it. Only a fool speaks ill of his homeland. Her brows were bristling dangerously, so I diverted hospital. Hostilities were speaking of my own people's ancestral home, the blighted world of the beer, the thousand-year tyranny of dragons we lived under, until the blue fire and the spell plague brought us to this world. Right. Uh... Love a potato. Not much for social tact that I get, I see. What is all that noise? Hello, world. Aww. Hello, world. Plenty left to see. Button clearly does something. Alright. We ascend further. 
New sound to the damp and like a pressure break. Is it the foam? That foul, contemptuous heel. You know these words. They are from the opening stanza of a play you found in this very tower. Or art thou friend? A rescue from my lonely way. How can I trust? How will I ever know? How can I show myself my darkest me? Oh, this would have been a fight. Oh, Jesus. I need a quick word. Command as you see fit, my lord. Rally. There is a light in every living thing. It's crawling toward the surface to survive. I'm in its way. It tramples everything. We'll kill the rest so that the one can thrive. Oh, uh, no, 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 thank you. I ha okay, saying that the moment he starts saying we'll kill the rest so that the one can thrive, I knew something was up. I'd rather not fight these things if it can be helped. They s they're too cool to fight. Maybe. Let me see what else there is. What other options there are before we do anything else. Animated armor. Bernard. They mentioned the, this in the notes. Bernard, guardian of the enchanted tower. Level 5 construct. He looks awesome. I love this kind of design. It reminds me... This reminds me so much of like those clockwork guardians from Dishonored 2. I, I love that. The silence stretches on. I'm all alone. Please, can I hold your hands for just a while? Of course, my love. Don't be afraid, sweet girl. What can I do? Would you like a hug? Yes, please. I would like a hug. Just a moment. Oh. <laughs> His arms are too tight and too low for a comfortable hug, as if he's meant to be embracing someone slightly shorter. Remember, you are loved so much. You can really, and everyone will be so proud of you, as I already am. Oh. Oh, that hurt my... That was so sweet. What is this place? Who are you? Used by the previous owner to access both the Underdark's darkest corners and her own basement. This ring seems to reflect light where there should be none. Well, it doesn't look. I. It looks like I can have a look around and not get. Breathe deep and move. Mauled.
Oh, I'm missing here. Something over there. I did something. I don't know what it did, but it did something. Paper is torn and patched in many places, as if it was well used, but treasure. On it is a small poem without a name. These empty sheets are all that's left of you. The last of all the thoughtless gifts you gave. I will hold on to them. It's all that I can do. I can't throw them away. I've never been that brave. not fight oh, no. Bernard. Seems nice. Even if he is just a robot. That glide does look pretty nice though. <laughs> These empty sheets are all that's left of you. The last of all the thoughtless gifts you gave. Ocean of greater healing. Come on, this is easy. My lord, I'm I, I don't want to kill it. <sighs> One day I'll catch a break. It'll be a very tough fight. I'd ra I don't I don't want to fight these things. I 
I mean, it took us a bit to find what we were looking for, but... I will admit, this was a nice little diversion. And we got a cool ring out of it. And a bunch of other stuff. Like a bunch of other stuff. What am I to do? I'd love to, thanks. Keep your distance, darling. What to do? So I think Swift as my feet can carry. I'm gonna leave. My ring lit up. Must have been linked to that button. Huh. Basement. We've been here already? No, no we haven't. This is new. thinking we were done. Another jar of basilisk oil. I can unfreeze that last drow if I so desire. Which I do. An excerpt from the true and impossible adventures of Tenebrook's Morrow. A pulp serial following the real-life exploits of an interplanar ship's captain. The real Captain Morrow is known never to have left her native water deep, and emerges from her rooms of a yawning portal only to exchange scrawled manuscripts for fresh meals and ink. His red dragon fuzz dispatched, the knight had no choice but to leap for my ship crashing to the new bride's deck even as his mount was swallowed by the eerie gloom of the astral plane shifting tides. Faithful Norals was upon him instantaneously, clawing and biting, alas in vain. Astral projection forts even the fury of a tabaxi cabin boy, but treacherous Kip Yankee only laughed as Norals' formless blows passed harmlessly through him. The knight's silver sword came about in an arc that missed Norals entirely, but neatly clipped the spiritual cord, anchoring, anchoring the tabaxi's stalwart soul to the plane. I mourned as my faithful feline companion faded from existence, but did not hesitate. The gif Yankee only smirked lazily at my charge, anticipating the futile efforts of another bound by the laws of this plane. But that is not, and has never been, Captain Tenebrex Mark. Unlike poor Norals, I had entered this plane in my full flush form, a fact I demonstrated by thumping the warrior solidly between the legs. He tumbled over the new bride's rail and down into the mists, even as a fresh horde of dragons rose from the distant dead citadel of Tun Arath. I mean, not bad. You can easily see that it making a trip on a making a rather lengthy trip a lot more bearable. Dying store novels, nothing nothing really to write home about, but you know, staff of arcane blessing. Mistra's Blessing. Bless grants an additional one for additional 1d4 to saving throws and weapon attack rolls and an additional 2d4 to spell. Uh... Though dust has settled into every nook and cranny of the staff, it still emanates a soothing aura. 
his previous owner cast it aside, forgotten because there was no body to bless. The Realm, according to Bumpo, a mass printed paperback detailing the adventuring experiences of fictional rube Gavin Bumpo. The book naturally falls to a dog-eared page in which Bumpo describes the more unusual races he's met in his travels. They weren't half so strange as the bird folk. First there a copper I met had the head of a parrot, the body of a human, and wings also of a parrot. I tried not to stare, but it was real hard. Turns out she was one of a motley party, because the cause around her table were a uh, tabaxi cat folk, a, gena a genasi elven folk, and a tortle turtle folk. Trying to act casual, I asked them what the hell they all were. They ignored me, but I can't blame them. To them, I must have looked awfully dull and average. But they were the first of their kind I'd seen. But I was just one of a billion boring humans to them. Excavation of the Enclave of Nala. Let's see. Elminster said Naloth was a wonder to behold when it floated in Faerun's sky. He was surely right. This Neverese enclave was once, was once a jewel in the Empire of Magic, with towers that pierced the heavens. And yet it fell, just as all Neverese enclaves did, crashing down when Karsus's folly ripped magic from the world. But even after it collapsed into the sea, its ruins still held a strange, twisted beauty. I traveled here from Halrua when I heard... The sea had retreated, and the ruins in the Haloth were visible once again. Alas, I was not the first. Looters have stripped the Enclave of its material wealth, destroying much of its esoteric riches in the process. I found arcane books used to make campfires, for magic now lost, lost now to the ages. <clears throat> I have met some Shadowvar here whose interests align with mine, and we have agreed to search for ruins together. I'm grateful for these allies. The ruins are mostly filled with thick skulled adventurers, and I cannot shake the feeling that someone is watching us, waiting to see what we uncover. Hmm. Alright. Hmm. <laughs> Where does door go? Ooh! That must have been what that lever did in the background. Okay, okay. So, let's rest here. Um, let's go to camp. Go to camp, we'll long rest, and then we can start exploring more of that next time. Okay, new camp, new camp design. Uh, wish I had a bag of holding. Lazel. To talk to Lazel. 
Where are you? Lizelle! Where are you, you grumpy... Grumpy... Grumpy pants? Oh, there you are. Something's on my mind. Speak. The disc appears in your mind's eye. Lazelle sees it too and considers the vision. Tissu markings. Ancient. I recognize them, but I can't make sense. No. Wait. The texts are enciphered, but I've solved the pattern. It's a story. About... about Orpheus. Your head buzzes in concert with Lazelle's, but it hardly matters. Even without the connection, you'd recognize her discomfort. Who's Orpheus? A traitor. A dead one. This text is heresy. I can hardly bear to read it, let alone speak it. You'll bear it just fine. Tell me what it says. Very well. I will read it to you. The Prince of the Comet, Part One. So it was that we were free from Geich shackles and turned our blades on each other. The heavens were shattered, and one great empire was divided in two. Gith traveled to the Hells to broker help for her people, her cause. Vlakith would have you believe Mother Gith proclaimed her our queen. Lies. Gith made no such proclamation. Vlakith seized the Empire against the Mother's wishes. I can see why that was considered but heresy. Gith had nurtured a son. Orpheus, Prince of the Comet, the true heir. He knew Vlakith's treachery. Orpheus rallied Gith's honor guard and declared the throne for himself. The War of the Comet had begun. Disregard this... this drivel. Gith declared Vlakith Queen of the Empire and her own son defied her. Orpheus would have ceded control to the Geich. Why are you so worked up? It's only a story. A ludicrous one at that. Vlakith seized the Empire from my people's very mother. The Queen would take even a child's head for so much as whispering this rubbish. Speak. No, nope. never mind. Let's end the day. Yes? I was just thinking about this. That monster hunter we met in the swamp a while ago. He's looking for you, isn't he? So it would seem. Hopefully he bumps into some knolls while stumbling around at night, and that's the last we hear from him. But why was he hunting you? What did you do? I didn't do anything. I was kidnapped, just like you. It seems Cazador wants me back. Who is Cazador, exactly? Cazador Tsar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate. The patriarch of his coven and a monster obsessed with power. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor.
It was bad enough running from the mind flayers. Now your past is chasing us too? I'm not happy about it either, you know. Especially for one of them to turn up. It was a group of Gur that attacked me that night in Baldur's Gate. I would have died had Kazador not appeared and saved me. So why send one after you now? To remind you of that night? Perhaps. He probably thought it was funny. But more likely, he's trying to send me a message. He's reminding me of his power. Even in the middle of nowhere, he can reach me. And he wants me back. How concerned should we be? Concerned? Do you know the power of Vampire Lord possesses? I played Curse of Strahd, dude. Shape, turn into mist, call walls to do his bidding, shrug off blows like they're nothing. He could walk into our camp tonight and kill you with his bare hands. And you'd be lucky if death was the worst thing that happened to you. All right. Well, what do you suggest? First, we have to... Uh, uh... I don't know. Well, if we kill his lackeys, he'll just send more. We just have to be vigilant, keep our wits about us, and kill any monster hunters on sight. Tell me about your history, Stereo. Everything. Lay it all out. Why do you insist on exhuming the past? Because your past is chasing a us. A vampire spawn. Kept by the Tsar family. Perhaps I still am. I was never able to resist their commands. But now, I've been conveniently lost. They won't ever control me again. I heard Neil Newbon got put up for uh, a Golden Joystick Award for his performance as Asterian, and I can totally see why. He's gonna be sweeping, um, he's gonna be sweeping up that convention money from uh, convention appearances, and I'm honestly happy for him. Like I've, I've been following him since. Uh, Resident Evil Free Remake, and then Resident Evil Village, and finding out that he's voice acting in this is just, was just great. And like apparently a lot of people have been saying that his work as a Starian is some of his best work. I can already see little hints and bits and pieces of it even now. So what do you make of Raphael's deal? I won't lie. It's tempting. If I keep the tadpole, I risk transforming into a grotesque monster. If I lose the tadpole, Cazador has control of me, body and soul, and I return to the shadows. It's grim either way. So why not sell what's left of my soul to a devil? Better he has it than Cazador. You're switching out one devil for another. You're trading one master for another. You'll be a slave either way. You're familiar with the phrase, better the devil you know. I know, Cazador. And I'll take anything that saves me from that. You don't mean that. Might think you do, but when the chips are down, Asterion. You don't mean that. Devils, demons, mind flayers, vampires, they're all the worst of the worst. They corrupt the natural world. My mom taught me that. A little bit of role play in there. Hey, buddy. Oh, 
Someone in camp wishes to speak to me. Who? Uh, who wants to talk to me? Please. God damn it, it's Gale. Who's that? Startled me. I, uh. It's miles away. That figure you conjured. Who is she? Someone you miss? Someone I miss and. lost, I suppose. Mistra commands all magic. Salvation, if such a thing exists, is hers to bestow or withhold. And yet, even now, more than I fear losing my own self and soul. I fear losing my command of her art. Magic is... my life. I've been in touch with the Weave for as long as I can remember. There's nothing like it. It's like music, poetry, physical beauty, all rolled into one and given expression through the senses. Would you like to experience this? This is the thing that I've heard people talking about. Apparently this locks you in, or apparently this, if you're not careful, can uh, loop you into a... Um... Yeah. Let, let's see how this goes. Then follow my lead. Uh... Now you. Apparently, if you're not careful with this, this can turn into something romantic. And I'm locked in with Shadowheart. But, Gale's my boy, so I don't want to... Oh, shit. It did it. You feel something strange. Like a kind word and a kind touch at the same time. It's warm and comfortable. Excellent. Now... Repeat after me. Athra Mistra Ril Kantrak Eo. Natural twenty, let's go. Uh was that not a natural twenty? of rose water and a sense of well-being a sliver of weave that tastes sweet on the tongue very good now i want you to picture in your mind the concept of harmony as true as you can think of the here and now all in memory of early youth the happy family moment Picture a place of utter peace, away from all the harm and the mayhem of civilization.
Are you fucking me? channeling the weave how does it feel it feel bail out bail out but it feels like a good time to call it a night the weave evaporates and as it does so you realize the night feels suddenly cold Look, and low gail you're a great guy oh there it goes how easily things slip away from us no matter how hard they were in the obtaining. Good night. I enjoyed sharing a moment of magic with you. Go ahead. I'm listening. I never realized it's so easy to cast magic. I assure you it's not. Don't get me wrong. You did well. The somatic component, the verbal component, even the focus on the inner self that invites Mistra in. But I was still your conduit. To perform such a feat alone requires much and arduous study. Yet it is life's most worthy pursuit in my impartial, if not humble opinion. Like, I appreciate you, Gail. You're a great guy. You're fun to talk to. You taught me a thing or two, but... I'm seeing someone already, and I do not want this to get weird. I think it's a good time to call it a night before this gets any weirder. I have to ask, with recent developments, what do you make of having a vampire in our camp? I know what it is to hunger. And I know what it takes to keep that hunger under control. He's done that so far, despite his condition. So long as he sates his appetite elsewhere, I'm happy to give him the benefit of the doubt. All right. A good one. No hard feelings, at least. That's, that's, that's good. Let's check in with Shadowheart. Well, my day just improved. Did you want something? Very serious of you. But go How ahead. How are you faring? Fine. What's on your mind? Quite splendidly, to give credit where it's due. You and I have shared some good times together. And it seems we have All plenty right. in common. Nothing new there. Alright. Open up. Maybe I should ch I should maybe I should change the outfit. I could potentially wear. Nah. 
Nah. Let's stick with what we got. Maybe if there's something like, I don't know, a little more casual, maybe with a jacket or something. Similar, like, lighter colors, maybe. As it is right now, I'm good. Still more stuff to check. Plenty of more things to work with. All right, now let's call it a night. Good news. I was half expecting something to happen. But I guess no news is good news at the very least. But seems like as good of a time as any to call it quits. A bit of a shorter stream tonight. I'm really sorry about that, but we made some progress. Next time we're gonna venture even further into the Underdark. Oh boy. What we've seen so far is anything to go by, it's just going to be even rougher. But, through grit and glory and steel and metal, we can, we'll, we'll manage to make it through this. As for now, this is where we're going to call it quick. I'll be back on Friday with um, more Lies of P. I think we're getting close to the end with that game. That's been really fun. And then Saturday, we will be picking uh, either Signalis or the Outlast Trials. I will let you know which one I decide on uh, Friday. And then we'll be back to that. Very slow going, only three streams a week. Um... I would like to make more progress, but there's still so many games I want to play, but I, wa I want to pace myself, and I don't want to get myself burnt out too much. So, uh, with all that said and done, I'm going to let you all go. Thank you all so very, very much for watching. My name has been J-Man. This has been Miners of Games. This has been Baldur's Gate 3, and you have all been awesome. I hope you all have a wonderful evening, morning, day, or night, wherever it is you are. And until next time, everybody, stay awesome. I'll see you Friday for more Lies of P. If you wish to revisit this series, I am uploading it sporadically on my YouTube channel. That's Miners Love Games on YouTube. You can find my VODs there. I, really, I try and release a new one around 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on uh, YouTube every day of the week if I can. So, there you go. Either way, I'm going to let you all go. Stay classy, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye!